guess the roots of the blues as well as the roots of sacred music, spirituals, are very much the same. Come out of slavery, come out, come from Africa, black people who started to work in America in the late 19th century, early 20th century. So it's in its origin certainly African. And simple rhythm, simple patterns related on one side to spiritual matters, faith, hope, trust in God, or on the opposite side, opposite side of the same coin to hardship and complain and, and longing for a better life. The tension between gospel and blues or the gap between the sacred and the profane is sort of a strange demarcation line that goes across the entire history of the blues. It's sort of a border area where there's some traffic going across in each, in each direction. And a lot of bands who would play Saturday night and on Sunday morning, or musicians on Sunday morning in church and Saturday night in the blues clubs. But it was two lives that were incompatible. A lot of mu blues musicians sort of traveled between the two lives. Others could only live inside one of them and then at one point in their life would break with that life, like Skip James, who from one day to another stepped out of the history of the blues, never played the blues again for 30 years, and became a minister. And that is not just him. A lot of blues musicians sort of felt that they had to leave the devil's music behind in order to play God's music. Others traveled easily between the two, but others never traveled, like Blind Willie Johnson, who only sang sacred music, never touched a single secular song. Although his techniques, especially his bottleneck style, are the finest in blues history. And of course, as far as guitar playing, as far as rhythm, as far as singing is concerned, it's the same music. <laughs> The blues is utterly emotional music. It's got a very simple pattern inside which musicians take enormous liberties. And I like that juxtaposition of a frame, a structure that is simple, inside which a lot of freedom can play out. It's also truly existential music. The blues music really deals with all kinds of troubles, with all kinds of worries and sorrows, with hardship. And you can easily identify with its subject. It's the best music to hear when you're down and when you need comfort. It's very strong rhythmically and in a way, it's at the roots of both jazz and rock and roll. And I was a jazz fan when I grew up. In my early 20s, I played saxophone, and I was heavily influenced by John Coltrane. And later on, I got into rock and roll, and especially the English versions of the blues and rock and roll. And the old blues is, and the blues patterns is really, the blues pattern is really at the origin of all of that. I didn't at first understand much what all these songs were about. My school English, English was very rudimentary. And it took a while until I started to grasp it. For a while I really thought Bebopalula would really mean something and that it must have a hidden meaning. But it didn't. Uh, 
like everybody else, I heard amazing things in, in, in all these songs. And sometimes if I hear them now and I remember what I thought at the time, they would mean I must, I must laugh. But English is, a, English is, in a way, such, a, such an easy language. Not easy to understand if you don't speak it, but there is an ease about it. And there is, it's very colloquial and you can be very relaxed with it. And if you sing it, you instantly understand the difference to German. German is more cerebral. And uh, you can't sing the blues in German. The, langu the, the rhythm of the language works totally against it. That's why there's very little German rock and roll, for instance. So that was something fascinating for me, that the language that they used was so much, was flowing so well with that sort of music. So from the beginning I was hoping I could interest a number of musicians or bands to play some of these songs. And of course I looked for those who had already expressed an interest in their work, maybe had already covered a song by Skip or JBs. But I also approached a few, some of my friends like Nick Cave or Lou Reed, who I know would be interested because I knew they loved the blues. And uh, in the end, I don't know, I think 12, there's 12 new songs, not new songs, old songs, but interpreted by singers and uh, songwriters and bands who work today, who cover mainly Skip and JB songs. We shot them all on DV. They're all recorded live. So it's not playback. They're all recorded live. And we all recorded these songs during the sessions when we shot with the musicians. Each of these shoots was exciting. And each of these shoots had its own conditions. They all took place in different studios in different cities. We shot in Los Angeles, in New York, in Chicago, in London. I mean, some of the highlights that come to our mind would be, for instance, Beck. Because Beck wouldn't play the same so this, a song twice. I mean, he, he played, he covered two songs by Skip James. I'm so glad in Cypress Grove. And each time he would start it, he would play it on a different guitar and he would play in a different rhythm and he would have a different approach. So he played like 12 variations of I'm so glad, but each one was different. And there was no way that you could even cut one together with the other. So at the end I had like 12 versions of I'm so glad, <laughs> but no way to cut, to intercut. That was exciting. I mean, all these shoes were fantastic. 